Hey everybody, welcome back to Misty's Classroom. Today, we're going to make our own beach tote bag. But first, of course, a little bit of history. So the word tote actually comes from Gullah or Gullah English, um, and it's spoken by the Gullah people. Now, Gullah are a group of African Americans or Black Americans from South Carolina and Georgia, that's in the southeast of the United States, and the islands that run parallel to the coast. So they're directly descended from enslaved Africans who labored on the rice plantations, but the language still survives today. Gullah Creole contains several words that we use now in American English. I'll leave some links below with information about more of those words and of the Gullah people. And now we're going to talk a little bit about fashion. So the first tote bag was made by, commercially made by L.L. Bean, and it was meant to carry ice from the car to the house. Then in the 1960s, Bonnie Cashin created a more luxurious version out of leather for the brand Coach. So it became like this very, very stylish accessory. But wait, some of you may have heard about the Birkin bag in some of the, uh, raps or rhymes that you listen to. But the Birkin bag is supposed to be the most uh, stylish and best design bag, upwards of 7000 or more dollars to get. All right, so we're going to make our own tote bag and it's not going to cost us $7,000. <laughs> so we have two, we need two 15 inch round or square woven placemats, we need some twine, we need three or four pairs of shoelaces, a large eye needle. Make sure that the package, it's like a beading needle, I mean, sorry, an upholstery needle or a hemp needle. And if you want, you can use some yarn. You don't have to use the yarn. Uh, the most important thing is making sure you have the right size needle. All right, so let's get started. What I did was um, I had a little bit of trouble to thread my needle. And so I put a tiny bit of tape at the end so that I'd be able to push uh, the twine through the needle eye. Now I'm choosing one of the largest needles out of the uh, package of needles that I got. And usually, like I said, they're upholstery needles or um, there is a specific, um, like it's called a hemp needle. And so for people that do macrame or those kinds of crafts, you want a needle like that because it's super, super big. So make sure, always make sure again, that you are very safe, that the surface that you're using is free and clear of anything and that you're very safe when you're using um, very sharp needles. This needle is very big, so you want to make sure that you're not in an area where you're unsafe and every time that you put it down make sure you put it in a place that it's not gonna fall or anything like that so once I threaded the needle I put a little bit of tape at the end and I was able to thread the needle and then I put a knot at the end of my thread which is my twine now you want to make sure that that knot is secure and then you want to use um, either a uh, pins or you can also probably use um, clothes pins to just mark off the areas where you want to um, leave open. So here I have the two pieces of placemats together but I want to leave an opening so I'm putting a place where I should stop, um, start and stop sewing. Make sure that it's even, that it's evenly spaced when you put them together. So you don't have to use pins, you can also use any kind of other marker, like um, a clothespin to hold it together. And then I'm using our basting stitch. Now, I did explain the basting stitch in our other video. I'll link that video um, uh, to this in the description box so you can see it. But I'm basically sewing in and out the same way that we would use a basting stitch, but now I'm using the twine. Um, and I'm gonna go all around till I get to the other pin and then I'm going to tie off the twine to make sure that it's safe, I mean to, be, to make sure that it's secure. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around from the beginning marker where the first pin was and I've gone all the way around to the other end of the um, bag where the second um, pin is for the to mark out where the opening is going to be. So I'm just going to cut uh, my thread a little long. I'm going to cut it a little long and then I'm going to separate the two pieces and I'm going to make two or three knots or three or four knots, very, very tight and secure knots to make sure that it doesn't unravel. So you want to pull very tightly 
and make sure that it stays at it stays put and once I do that I make two or three or four knots then I'm gonna cut the uh, excess off and that creates my opening for my bag and the let the last thing we do is we create and then stitch on the hand so for the handles I basically took um, two pieces of yarn and one shoelace and I braided them together so I created a knot at the top of um, the length of the yarn and shoelace and then actually in order to braid it you have to use a little bit of leverage what we call leverage so I actually tucked that knot under my chin and braided the whole length down and then I did the same thing I, I put a knot on the other side and that way I was able to create the length that I wanted um, for the handles so here I'm gonna show you that there now you don't have to use yarn I just like the colors of the yarn and I had this yarn in the house already if you don't have the yarn but you've gotten the, the shoelaces you can do that with the shoelaces and you take three shoelaces and you and you knot them together and then create the braid all the way down the length of the shoelace and then create a knot at the other end so that's one way to do it and if you have other kinds of string in the house you can do that you want the string to be a little bit um, wide and a little bit heavy duty you don't want it to be very thin so once you finish creating your straps you are going to sew them onto um, the front and back of your bag you want to make sure the same way you want to measure or really map out where you're going to attach them so you can again you can use the um, pins or you can use the clothes pins if you don't want to use anything sharp to hold it in place until you're ready to sew. So you want to place them in the area where you um, want them to go. And then you're going to use the same needle that you used before that's threaded with the twine and you're going to sew them with that same kind of basting stitch in and out so that it's secured to uh, the bag. So notice that I'm pushing up and in to um, the bag the front and then I'm pushing through the yarn and the shoelace to make sure that it's secure I pull a little bit to make sure that it's not too loose and I'll add more stitches if I need to if it um, if it feels a little bit too loose once I'm finished and I feel like it's very secure it's secure enough then I do the same thing I tie off um, the twine thread and then clip the edges so that's how you add the straps on and you do that for each um, side so both sides of the strap are attached to the bag on the front end and then both sides of the straps are secured to the back of the bag make sure that you line them up uh, evenly and that the the front and the back are in the same places right? so that it's not crooked and you, and you don't want to have a crooked bag that would be really bad <laughs> Now I actually left my ends of the straps exposed, but I like the way that those little pieces were hanging. You don't have to do that. I probably will add like some feathers to my bag, which is why I left them hanging like that because I wanted to add a few feathers to hang off of my bag. But you don't have to do that. You can actually secure your straps on the inside so you don't see the little hanging, hanging bits or pieces. It's up to you what you like. And again, just be careful and take your time, you know, really focus on what you're doing. Um, make sure that you're in a space when your, your workspace is clear so that if you set your tools down, you can pick them up easily without hurting yourself or that they won't fall on the floor or injure pets or anything like that. Um, also, you know, have your parents help you sit down next to you and help you work. Not only will it go faster, right, your bag will be finished faster, but they'll be able to supervise what you're doing and help you out if you get into any um uh, if you have any difficulty finishing any of the tasks Once it's finished once you add the straps on you're pretty much done you can add your sunscreen your beach towel uh, your headphones your cell phone and You know you're good to go I Hope you like this project and if you want to get notified about other projects in the future, please like share and subscribe Bye guys